Hey everybody, and welcome to our second video lecture on intercultural communication. In this video lecture, we'll talk about intergenerational communication. The first thing that you need to know is that generational stereotypes in general are nonsense, right? Um, generations are groupings that encompass millions and millions of people, and so any statement that you try to make about a generation is unlikely to be comprehensive or accurate. But at the same time, all of us, every single one, we exist in history, we live through history, and the events we experience, they define our identity, and they define the way that we look at the world. And so to be successful communicators, we should be aware of the events that have had a major impact on shaping different generations of people's worldviews. We should think about what those worldviews are, generally speaking, and finally, and more concretely, we should think about the concrete communication preferences of different generations of workers. So for the remainder of this video lecture, I want to think about um, the four main generations that you're likely to encounter in the workplace, at least for the moment, uh, the events that defined their lives, the worldview those events helped produce, and their communication preferences. So let's start out with the oldest generation that you're likely to encounter in the workplace, the boomers, the baby boomers. Uh, these are folks who were born between roughly 1946 and 1964, uh, and their early lives were defined by uh, the post-war economic boom, the, uh, the great tide of prosperity that characterized the post-World War II United States. Uh, their early lives were also characterized by the Cold War tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, uh, and also by the upheavals of the 1960s and the 1970s. The civil rights movement, the black freedom struggle, uh, the anti-Vietnam War movement, the women's rights movement, etc., etc. And because the boomers are part of such an enormous generation, um, and because their early life was marked by these, these huge era-defining events, um, they're prone to seeing their experience it's typical, right? Uh, again, it's hard to make a generalization about any generation, uh, but this is perhaps one of the, the most defining features of the boomer mindset. Now, as for their communication preferences, uh, boomers tend to prefer face-to-face -face, uh, or phone communication. Uh, some boomers are very comfortable with email. Some are less comfortable. Uh, and generally speaking, boomers tend to dislike things like Teams or Slack or text messaging. Our next generation is Generation X. Um, this consists of folks uh, who were born between roughly 1965 and 1982. And Generation X is, generally speaking, their generational experience is defined by growing up in the shadow of the massive historic generation that preceded them and the massive historic events uh, that preceded them, right? And as a result, um, members of Generation X are often prone, though obviously not exclusively, they're prone to feeling overlooked. Now, as for their communications preferences, uh, Generation X tends to be a very versatile uh, generation when it comes to communication. Uh, Gen Xers tend to be comfortable with face-to-face -face communication, phone communication, email, Teams, Slack, and text, though Teams, Slack, and text are the areas where you're, you're most likely, generally speaking, to find the greatest amount of resistance amongst Gen Xers. Our third generation is my generation, the millennials, folks who were born uh, roughly between 1983 and 1995. Um, and these are folks who, in their view at le least, have lurched from crisis to crisis throughout uh, their adult lives, from the 2008 financial crisis to the 2016 presidential election, uh, and now to the COVID pandemic. Uh, when the COVID pandemic started, uh, I know a lot of my fellow millennials and I were out there on social media basically saying, like, not this again, yet another crisis that will uh, derail our lives, just as we felt like we were getting things on track uh, as a generation. And as a result of those experiences, there's a very stereotypical, but also very real anger uh, that characterizes the, the millennial mindset. 
Now, as for our communications preferences, we're seeing a bit of a shift here. So uh, millennials tend to be much more comfortable with email, Teams, Slack, uh, or text, much more virtual means of communication. Uh, and millennials tend to be much more uncomfortable with face-to-face -face communication, phone, and of course, there is a growing frustration amongst many millennials with email. And lastly, we have, uh, in, for, for, for most of our audience, your generation. Uh, not all of you will be Zoomers, but many of you watching will be. Uh, and Zoomers are folks who are, generally speaking, born uh, 1996 and onwards. And uh, Zoomers, as I understand it, feel that their life experience thus far has been defined by uh, the pervasiveness and ubiquity of social media and by the, the many, many crises that, we, uh, that we've seen um, uh, throughout the first 20 odd years of the 21st century. And that's produced in many Zoomers a kind of characteristic gloominess, but it's also produced a really admirable sensitivity. Uh, sometimes people knock this sensitivity, but I actually think it's a really wonderful thing. Uh, the kind of stereotypical um, uh, Zoomer ability to connect to one's emotions and understand where other folks are coming from uh, and empathize with people's experience. Um, as for Zoomer communication preferences, you would know this better than I would, uh, but my general impression is that Zoomer communication preferences are pretty similar to those of millennials. Uh, that Zoomers tend to like text messaging, Teams, and Slack, to an extent email, uh, and tend to dislike face-to-face uh, -face communication, phone communication, and to an extent email as well. Now, uh, as with those models of cultural difference that we discussed previously, um, it's hard to say exactly how you can uh, apply, at least in a concrete way, uh, these, these uh, portraits of the generational character that we've discussed thus far. As we've said before, uh, gener generational stereotypes are usually nonsense, uh, but they, the, the, these, these characterizations of uh, the events that have defined different generations and the mindset they've produced uh, can at least help us set expectations when we go into interactions with folks from different generations. And if we see uh, behaviors that align with these characterizations, perhaps we can understand where they're coming from a little bit better. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this video lecture. Uh, if you have not yet watched the video lecture on uh, navigating differences in company culture, please do so as soon as you can. And as always, thanks for watching.